Good evening. Welcome to the August 5th, 2014 meeting of the Planning Board. Um, call the meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So with the roll call members present, uh, Mike Caparulio, Chairman. Tom Young, Vice Chair. Bob Curtis, Member. Kevin Boyle, Blackman. Uh, absent this evening, uh, Russell Blanchett, Joel Kappelson, Mike Coteau, and Jason Garrett. All right. Public input this evening. Seeing none, I'll close public input. And the first item on the agenda would be to reopen the application by KNM developers. I'll take a motion for that. Make a motion to uh, take up the deliberation again on the application by KNM developers. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Passes 4 0 0. Um, the board will continue deliberation on an application by K&M Developers LLC to subdivide one lot into 13 residential lots, map K, lot 9-2. One conventional lot is fronting on Brickyard Drive. The remaining 12 open space development lots are located at the extension of Hamill Circle. And we have a request from the applicant um, to continue this to the next meeting. Uh, for the record, uh, dated Monday, August 4th from Patrick Colburn, who is a project manager for um, Nordstrom Associates, please accept this request on behalf of our clients, K&M developers, to defer the subject case to the next available meeting agenda. Pursuant to your recent phone conversation with Tony Basso of this office, we are seeking a formal legal opinion relative to the existing Hamill Circle right away and our ability to remove a portion of the dedicated way as requested by the zoning administrator and road agent. Let us know the specific date of the meeting and whether or not you need anything further from us. So at this point, I would take a motion to um, continue this to the September 2nd, 2014 meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carries 4 zero, zero. And I'm assuming they'll be notified regarding the date? Okay. Yeah, they, they already asked. Okay. <laughs> so then it's done. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, impact fee update. And so, Jenny, you want to drive where we should jump in in terms of the comments from Mr. Mayberry and what we need to get through? Yeah, I'll give you a quick overview and then go from there. Um, two general updated pieces. Uh, the last meeting you guys went through the ordinance after um, speaking with Mr. Mayberry, yep. there were only a few changes uh, that had that remained to be made um, after that conversation. Uh, the one piece that was new language, just to go over it really quick. Um, Is that in the track changes? Uh, or the clean version. Yeah, the, I just keep maintaining the track changes so that when it's all done and over, okay. and we report out on what changed. Yep. We, we have it, but doing a repeal and replace, you don't technically need the word for word changes. Um, so it's uh, down below, you'll see draft impact fees, 731.14, clean. Yep. Page three, there's a sentence highlighted in yellow. Payment of fees. Uh, yes, yeah, so this was getting at the uh, vesting provision and that um, you're only vested as long as statute allows you to be vested, um, after which if you haven't, if you haven't created active and substantial completion and, and started work, um, you lose your, your vesting. Um, so after those five years, they would no longer be protected um, from changes in the impact fees. So this is just trying to clarify, you had wanted to put a date in just to clarify that as of this point, or as of when these changes would be adopted, hence it says March XX, I gotta find out when town meeting would be. Um, uh, subsequent payment of fees shall be assessed at the rate in effect at the time of payment unless vested per 
that stat, the statute, um, which would give them. Uh, what I did is I did not specify the five years because that has gone from three years to six years to five years in statute just in the last few years. Um, so rather than put a year in there and run the risk of the vesting period changing again by statute, I just left it as referencing just the statute. The statute. Um, just one clerical, obviously it's March of 15, right? Mm -hmm. It would be March of 15. Good point, thank you. I mean, small item, but. <clears throat> And I'm assuming since it's an RSA in place, that RSA number will never change. It or shouldn't. It shouldn't. Okay. Usually, so if they does. do, if they add, they do subparagraphs to it. Okay. So it'd be like six seventy four thirty nine. A. Okay. Anyone have any questions or issues with that? No. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Is that the only item? That was the only. Um, the others were just either accepting changes suggested by council. <coughs> Or um, shoot, I can tell you specifically. One was a. It used to be shall. We ch oh, we yeah. changed it to yep. should. We changed it back to shall. Um, that was at the end. Um, the other piece was the um, the uh, appeals, where current practice and current ordinance states that appeals go to the planning board. Um, we had proposed that that change to be selectmen, but based on council's comment of not providing adequate due process to have the selectmen make a decision and then uh, hear appeals on the same decision. Went back to where you were. You went back to where you were. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so, oh, and sorry, uh, page two. It's not a huge change. Um, the definition of new development. We had two separate bullets originally. That was A was the creation of a new dwelling unit or unit in the habitable portion of a residential building. And B was the conversion of a legally existing use or additions thereto, which would result in a net increase in the number of dwelling units. And council felt that those were redundant and suggested merging. I don't know that I did much of a word reduction when I merged the two um, into a new, just consolidated A. Um, so what we're looking at now in the clean copy, it's still separate though, correct? Yeah, no, the clean copy, it's it's all A, what was formerly A and B is merged, okay. and then you've got just um, B through D instead of B through E. Yeah, okay. yeah right. going through E, so. So those are the changes since the last meeting. Okay. Thank you, Jen. Very good job. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. Looks very different than it was before. Huh? It looks very different from the start. Yeah. So I guess that's a good thing. I think it's come a long ways. It actually makes some sort of sense. I don't know that it's any shorter, though. <laughs> as well, much let, as you try. I'll let you know next month. All right. That's because that's the last seminar this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> perfect. I'll be going to that one in Dover. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so at this point, I think it's, I don't know that there's anything more to do other than to fill in the date when you know that town meeting will be, okay. um, you know, schedule wise and logistic wise, it should probably go back to council for one additional review or one final review just based on the final changes. Um, and then following which, it's still too early to start hearings for a town meeting. It's well before uh, the schedule allows right at this point. So at some point, uh, late fall, early winter, we need to schedule hearings and decide whether it's going forward to um, town meeting in March. And that's bundled with everything else too. The ordinance itself and also the hearing has to cover the impact fee changes yeah so that's the two separate hearings. two yeah two separate kind of processes so you can bundle all your hearings together though so if you wanted to hold your hearings on the impact fee schedules to go with the 
impact fee ordinance, you could do that all as one one evening. Mm -hmm. um, it would make more sense since they're interrelated, partially. Or? Yeah, I mean, it's it gets folks here all in one night instead of multiple nights, um, which is easier. Um, the more you can bundle it. It's also then one notice that you send out as opposed to multiple notices that you send out, which logistically makes things easier on the administrative side. Then why don't we uh, so. why don't we move forward as long as the board agrees, and um, when we get to that point, that stage, we'll do them both in one evening. Okay. So let's get it both done. Yeah, and at any point when you're uh, ready to send it to council, I think you I can send you the word file that you can send over to council, okay. or I think Joan can do that for you. Yeah, we just way. have Joan do it. Um, it okay. Is there? Um, I'm assuming you prefer the council will prefer to have them as we finish them as opposed to bundled. <laughs> Is there any difference? I don't know that it matters. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So why don't you just have her send it over then. This is, I consider this clean and done. We're done working on it. Okay. So. All right. So I'll send the word file to Joan. on with impact fees that's our evening mm -hmm. <laughs> next uh, next stop in the process will be with um, mr. Mayberry's comments or should we wrap up the roads in the schools piece completely um, no the questions that he left you with were specific to the roads and schools, schools. Okay. yeah um, and and then I guess he also left you homework um, for See, if you look down below, there were a couple questions that he had for phase two to get started. Okay. But so we could tackle those tonight also and pass that along to him. Right. So the revised impact fee report, the links on top never work on a Mac. So if I'm going to. Uh, sorry. Which, uh, um, which yeah. PDF number? it is if you look down to the bottom i believe it's the second from the last school and road fee school and road fee bcm planning 16 july 2014. it's essentially the exact same document that you saw mm -hmm. at the last meeting i guess yep. he made a couple typographic um, corrections, corrections and, and other minor corrections after the meeting okay so is the best way to go through this to um but we have the questions on top that he wants us to address. Yeah, that's what I had jotted down. Um, I think I think the school one he did the way he laid it out makes it easier to to see what the remaining questions and decisions are. Mm -hmm. If you go to page three. Okay. It's section two. He's got the summary of school fee options and recommendations. He lays out the kind of the big pictures, the big picture questions that still remain. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first item we have to discuss is which fees are being assessed, which school. And then he bundles in all road types, so I'm assuming we'll address both of those issues. So maybe starting with the schools, uh, what does the board feel between uh, the three schools and what fees should be assessed? I know last time there's a discussion about um, the middle school, the drop of the elementary school. Yeah. There's nothing being done with it. Keep in the middle and high school? Yep. Yeah. Any comments from anyone? I know we kind of hashed it out last time. Strategic comments from NRPC? I think he's got some good points. I would honestly say he's the one who's gone through and done the analysis. So where he's made a recommendation, yep. um, I would certainly give credence to any of the recommendations that he's made. Um, so, so that said, when he's looked at it, I think he's made a, a pretty strong case for excluding the elementary school component. Okay. 
Do we need official motions to carry this, or is it just discussion to send back to him for final revision? Um, We're just basically answering his questions, correct? Yeah, and and I need to find out for him him what the final kind of package is. Um, I was looking at the again the Lebanon example, mm -hmm. where I think this document they had a similar document to this that lays out. Um, the options and the methodology and then they have a separate document that says this is what we have voted on and this is what we have in place um, so this is essentially your backup yep um, so I don't know that that kind of that final this is what we've adopted document was something that he prepared because looking at what Lebanon has it looks like it's clearly something that they in in town um, developed as opposed to Mr. Mayberry. So I don't know that it's in his scope of work to draft that separate document. It's worth asking. Okay. But we can go through and circle what what you guys have decided. Okay. And I'll well, certainly pass that on to him and do one final once over with him just to for any clarifications. Yeah. So I move we strike well not move, but I guess we're gonna be striking the elementary, keeping middle and high school for impact fees. Okay. Um, for all road types, <clears throat> so I wouldn't up in a road. Why don't we go do all schools first yeah. and then go to roads after? Authorize any of the proposed discounts. And where are the proposed discounts listed? Is there one section of all of them? Sure. Um, okay, so again, if you're sorry, when I say page three, I mean like the number at the bottom of the yep. page is three, not the three in the PDF. Um, the last paragraph on page three. Mm -hmm. um, he he suggests applying a 20% discount to the fees uh, under the assumption that uh, enrollment per dwelling unit is likely to decline in the future so that assessing a, a impact fee at the full rate based on the number of kids in a home today would over assess um, future households or the future impact. So on page page four at the top, you see it that the columns are set up so that you have the fees as calculated are the first two, mm -hmm. and then the second two are the discounted. So you can see that difference. Um, and then those major sections uh, across in rows are the one, two, three, four different assessment methodologies. So you can assess as a fee per unit by structure type, a fee per unit for two structural groupings, a fee per square foot of living area, or a fee per unit by bedrooms. Do you know if the town has ever had a discounted plan before? <clears throat> That we were going this direction, or was this something new? I don't think so. I think it's something new. I think it's also it's getting at um, a changing demographics that are projected in in the state yep. as a whole. Um, well, if you offer a discount, you have to offer what the terms of discount, and what, how it applies, how long it applies for. It can't be like an open-ended discount. When no, it would change. it would be across the board. Yeah. It would be, so he, what he's saying is he went through the, the methodology based on historical and current data and came up with the fees as calculated. But he's saying that things are changing and so those would be, if you go even five years out or he's projecting out to 2030 and some of it, that would be higher than what the actual need would be. Therefore, he's saying to assess at a reduced rate because that using historical data is higher than what the projected would be. And so the discount is across the board. It is a bit of a um, guess as to how to set the discount amount. So the 20 percent, it's. Well, I don't know that it's, it's arbitrary, but it's well, a, a best guess <coughs> um, as opposed why, why to. Isn't it just built into the fee then? Why well, that's what he's suggesting as an as an alternative that you can just build it in. But he, in terms of how he calculates what the fee is, he then has to apply essentially a discount on top of. So your point is just lower the all the fees twenty percent. Right. His paperwork gives him this. The way that 
what everything I'm set up. If, why, why is he giving him that if he knows? Well, because this is what the books he's using tell him it should be. Okay. But in actuality, this is what we really need. So like Jen's saying, we can take this and put it here and not say discount. In the end, to... Well, yeah, I would not say discount, I guess. Yeah. No, you wouldn't say discount in the end. It's just the methodology that you're choosing. Right. So think of it, if you're looking at um, table 1-1, one, one, yeah. think of it this way. You're, choose, you're gonna ultimately choose one block of numbers. So you're gonna, of the four columns, you're gonna choose one column and of those four horizontal sections, you're only gonna choose one of those. So you'll only get, a, when you finally pick what you want, it'll only be one small section of this table that you'll put forward and say, the impact, the school impact fees in Litchfield are X, Y, and Z. Um, and then this document supports that methodology. Um, and Based on this, what he's done here for, for a methodology, all of these are, are legitimate. There are multiple different ways you can arrive at um, coming up with a defensible impact fee. Uh, but it, there are some areas where you have to make a judgment call based on what you foresee as the projected needs in your community are. And that's where the decision making between the different methodologies comes into play. If that makes sense. So you've got one, two, you get 16 options. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> Forget three, you get 16. This is funny because seven, eight years ago they said the schools would be overcrowded and I mean, things can go in cycles too. So who's to say seven or eight years from now it's not a reverse of what it is currently. So. And that gets at the need. That's what. Um, I'm going to be in a bad position then because we're under. That's that's a very fair um, consideration. That's also why um, like your CIP is on a five-year schedule, um, and a lot of planning efforts you do need to. They're iterative. Yep. Um, you know, I, I like to liken anything that's a forecast or a projection to throwing darts. You know, you can place the target on the wall based on where you think it should be, but where you actually hit and what things actually are. So if we put this in with the di well, mm. discount, but I'm calling it discount, the lower amounts due to the way things are currently, in the future, if things change five to six years from now, the mechanism to correct that. Is to come be, back and hold a, another like hearing. Just like we're doing now, basically. Yeah. Yep. You so every year. Changing the numbers. Right. The mechanism is in place to do it now. Well, this is the, this yep. is the footprint or the foundation Right, and every year, that's why every year you come back and you revisit the tables. Um, you have historically every year done the cost escalator, which you apply, um, and then revisit what the rates are. You make a proposal to the selectmen and the selectmen review and re-adopt um, or adopt new um, based upon what, what's happened in the past year. And obviously, since we're refunding impact fees, we've collected a lot more than we need anyway for right now. So I'm fine with uh, the 20% reduction, um, at least as a baseline for the next however years. Um, I see two heads then shaking hands. Yes. Yep. Everyone agree? That's fine. Yeah. yeah, I agree on the deduction, yeah. Okay. okay. So you're looking at the middle school to high school facilities only with the 20% discount. So that's the far right column. Yep. yep. All right, one, one decision <laughs> down. You've chose your column. Now you have to choose your row. And again, we're doing one category of the four or are we like, you say choose the row. I mean, there's the, the fee per unit by bedroom, fee per unit by living area, fee by unit two structural and unit structure type. Right. I, I think so are we picking one is, grouping or we? You pick one grouping. Yeah, you have four different groupings. By square foot, is that correct? Mm -hmm. We currently do it by square foot. Correct. What would be the advantages or disadvantages of making a change to one of the other three? I, I don't think there is a significant. <clears throat> advantage or disadvantage. In fact, Mr. Mayberry's um, recommendations was either 
the fee per unit by structure type with five categories, the top row, mm -hmm. or the fee per square foot of living area for two structural groupings, which is what you currently have. If you look at it, obviously single family detached is bigger, so the square footage is more, so you, I mean, it, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, in the end, it's for, they more or less come out pretty close. Okay. Um, going by square foot uh, acknowledges that there's a lot of variation with among single family homes yep. uh, in the size and um, by going by square foot you're more likely to capture um, more square footage as a result of more bedrooms um, which is more people so which equals more be. people um, so that's as, a thought there it's but it's simple yeah it's had there been any issues with it over the years as well, to it's, uh, it's working now right? yeah it's why would we change it they ain't right. broke don't fix it there's okay. never been any issues okay so then the next question he posed was the cap and the cap was specifically related to um b per square if you chose this per square foot option yeah. so um, the max? right so setting a maximum um he recommended capping at 2,500 square feet. The argument being that beyond that, you don't necessarily have more bedrooms or more people, you just have a bigger house. That's only for single family, though. Um, Any structure, but you're not gonna have a well, you can't well, say manufactured well, home for 2,500. I'm sorry? Well, yeah, but if it's by, it's for any structure, right? I would actually... Yeah. Um, how could you have a multi-family well, plus units? But I think it has to apply to every structure to be universal. Yeah. I think it because I'm, we're not picking the one that goes by type of structure. Yeah, I understand. So that. you can't but really we have, for per square foot. We have single family detached, and we have all of the structure types. I can understand. I think it for single that family. Half the single family detached is twenty five hundred square feet, but not all right. other structure types. I gotta see where he's got yeah. the. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree as well. I'm trying to see if he had a little bit more in here on the. Proposed cap. You take a multi family unit and you have the units that you're going to assess it based it off a two or three bedroom. And you take your square footage and your impact fees calculated out that the way it is now. If I take my triplexes or my duplexes, I take the unit and each unit is assessed that impact fee the way oh. it is. Okay? And that is how it comes out. Okay? The habitable area can have habitable area. Yep. That's a one time impact fee on that building period. So right. You, you could notice yeah, it hit three times. What? If it's triplex. If the triplex is three, it's three units. Yeah. That's what we're referring to now. Right. Units, yeah. dwellings. Same, same idea. So it's three dwelling units. If you get a ten-unit townhouse, it, it's ten different impact fees. Yeah, right. 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 And each one is assessed. Now it's a little different. Okay. The two bedrooms are not assessed as much because you have less square footage. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then you get into single bedroom units, and that's a gray area on, on your tenant occupancy and what your impact's going to be. Your one bedrooms don't create a right. this problem with that. Right, and I think so. That gets it. But it's, bottom line, you still square footage. it's still a total square footage. You're not working. You don't currently have a cap, correct? Nope. Nope. So, um, nope. I think. Part of what comes in, the all other structure types, um, that would include your your townhouse, your duplex, your multifamily. So those have generally fewer children per square foot, and that's why they have a lower rate mm -hmm. for those. And I would say you this would continue in, to be assessed in the same method as current, except those duplexes, mul uh, multi-families triplexes what have you multi manufactured housing would be assessed at a lower rate per unit and per up. square foot yeah. okay. and you you wouldn't have right. to worry about the cap on those exactly uh, probably never hit it right yeah. you're never going to hit, hit the cap on that. so why differentiate if you're not going to hit it it's different rate right so i think the, the square footage this the square footage cap you're would apply to single percent. family yeah right because you're you're yeah, that's very big. Yeah, the you're... Market. We're downsizing. The world is downsizing now. Yeah, there's not the market for the 2,500 no, square... No, or the 3,000 no. nurse. Uh, um, or five. No, we can't... We're, we're, the income level in this town so high. Just to hate that. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. It's a clean I don't know where it's coming no. from. It ain't coming from tax rate. 
That's that's my criteria. Like, how much do I have to clean? No. Okay. So should we be specific with him that it's a uh, twenty five hundred cap for a single family detached only? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you could just add that verbiage. Okay. So we're here. All the presses we don't consider schooling as part of the impact. Yeah. So the, the, all others are assessed per s square foot per unit. And one bedroom unit, as you know, Jen, you very seldom get anything out of those. Oh, no yeah. No oh, children yeah. involved, not everything. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, chances are one bedroom is going to be. On the small side, 600. Yeah. On the large side, yeah. 8, 9. Yeah, most 8. So, so it's going to be small. All right, so method of assessment. Is that yeah. You guys are cruising. All right, so that is the first paragraph. I'm just, I just flipped back to page 3. Um, I kind of flagged the paragraphs so that... I had a kind of a question per paragraph. Um, the first paragraph and the third paragraph was getting at your method choices. Your second paragraph was getting at your elementary school, middle school versus high school. So that you just did. Um, you did your cap um, and the discount. So that was all your major dis decisions for schools. Okay. Yeah, jump to roads. His only comment is all road types question mark. Is that the only thing we have to decide? Yeah, and that's uh, that's wrong. That's my miss. I, as I reread it, um, he just he's got it's not road types. Sorry. So um, okay. This one he didn't into? lay out the considerations at the front. <laughs> So you have to kind of like sift through it to find them, which is this the um, so, um, are we on the same doc or are we on same document? It's road impact fees start on page twenty three. I know, sir. I think he spent less time at the last meeting going over the roads. And I think it was just there, there were a lot more questions about the schools, about the schools yep. um, to begin with. Um, okay. <coughs> so just kind of scanning where I flagged. So is there more to translate from any all road types question mark? So is there another Yeah, ignore that, that question. <laughs> okay, so is there some, is there, was that in his... Um, no, that was okay. my over over interpreting the my chicken scratch. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. The big thing on the roads was he has um, three different methodol uh, three different methodologies, really two, um, and I'll explain. Um, if you look at page twenty six, there is a lane mile model. Um, this is essentially very similar to the method currently used. Um, and, huh? Just similar to the state method in lane mile. Right. Um, it, it looks, this here is looking at just trying to identify the unit cost f of development. Uh, of a road of sufficient surface area to accommodate average travel demand generated by whatever that use development use is. Um, so that's the first model that he goes through. The second model you have two alternatives on, um, but they're essentially the same. It's just some of the input data that's different, um, and I can explain that. Um, so. Model B starts on page 31, and this is a road impact fee cost allocation per new trip. Now, is there any component of this in anything we do now? 
I know you said we we more closely match the first one. Right. Are there any pieces at all? No. This is this is all. This one's here. a new, this is a new methodology for consideration. Um, it's it's looking at trying to calibrate the amount of the fee to specific annual investments in the road system with a portion of improvement costs recovered from new development in relation to its proportionate trip generation over the improvement period. So saying how much, so it looks at that, that new development and says how many cars is this development going to send out over the roadway and assessing based on the impact of the actual estimated number of vehicles. Um, it, it seems to be more complex than just, you know, yes. here's, here's how long the road is, how many miles it is, whatever, here's how much each mile it costs. It almost over, it overthinks it a little bit. That's yeah. gone beyond the scope of the logic. <laughs> you don't know which way he's going to turn. He's going to turn this road and go this road. You're oh, we got all that. Well, that doesn't matter. It's just how many go out the driveway. doesn't matter which way they turn. Yeah, but yeah, I mean something like that I mean, they could have five cars or they could have one car yeah so what this is based on is um industry averages yeah. and so there's a whole giant book that goes through <laughs> uh, yes um that goes through it's the you know the ite manual it's got for every type of use possible it's got how many trips are estimated to come out of it um as, as an annual average or an does annual it, it take into daily. Account how many times you have to go back because you can't remember like I did if you close the garage door? <laughs> <laughs> yes. How many police trips on that we don't count for? How many what? Okay. Police trips. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's what we're on. Well, you know, okay. they, you know how you drive it's down the street, street and you go over those little rubber hoses stretched street. across the road? Yeah. There, there's those. They also will sit there, literally sit there in a driveway click every time a car comes in and out and they'll do these studies over and over and over to update things it's hey, really fascinating work i've seen them tell <coughs> don't ever stop talking because they will ignore you you lose count i don't want to do although they, they do now have it so you can do it all on an ipad instead of those big boxes yeah. it's nice plus they get the new electronic one huh you get the new electronic one now to be yeah. adding down. The yellow ones? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, All right, so that's the second way. Then the third way would be? The third way is, is the same as, as the second way. It's the inputs that are used um, to estimate the future. So what it does is they look at what the current 2010 levels are um, based on your total population and number of dwelling units. Um, and then they project out to 2030. Um, he used, so the two different models, he used kind of his standard model um, for the first one, which just does, a, to, to get data geeky, he just did a linear projection based on historical trends. Um, but as we all know, uh, historical trends are not really the direction we're heading in. And if you take the last 30 years and project them forward, it makes things look really rosy and lots of growth. But if you actually look at the last decade, we've plummeted. Uh, we're no longer doing this. We're doing this. Um, and so the second model, he says, okay, I can't use that, that old just plug in the numbers and let, let it come up with some a projection for me based on history. Um, he pulled uh, the Office of Energy and Planning's uh, 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 population projections for 2030 and used that instead. That is based on current on the ground trends in the in New Hampshire um, and I'd say are, are more accurate. And then the number of um, households is computed based upon a just doing an arithmetic process of dividing out the average number of people per household. Um, I will say though, based on new data from New Hampshire Housing, that that number of um, households or housing units may be too low. Part of the problem in that is that all of the growth in households is in um, older demographics and they t have fewer people per household one to two people per household instead of two and a half three um so you've got 
more demand for housing. You actually have more housing units that are required um, than if you just did the quick division process. Less traffic. Less traffic, yes. So, nonetheless, if you were to go the B, the model B, I would recommend B2, which is based on a more grounded projection of future population. Personally, I think lane mile model. Less, makes it less headaches for the town, too, for whoever puts this all together. Okay. And if it's covered ourselves and it's worked well and there hasn't been issues in terms of how it's worked before, then. Okay. Let's, uh, anyone else's comment or. I think the way we've been doing it works out. Method of, the problem we've had is the method of relinquishing <coughs> impact fee to a project or something that was based on certain things or certain methods. It's always that. When, when can you do it? The equipment for the road was one issue. You used impact fee for that. That made a big difference to save the town some money. You put a plow on the road and, and, and everything else. A good one. The loader. It's very hot. So is the in, how the impact fee is related to what's considered new and expansion to help. The road is the equipment that would be the issue. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any desire for B or C or discussion on it? You good with a uh, lane mile model? So we will go with that? Yeah. So it's model A? Yes. So, right. I'm just looking quick to see if he had a summary table that compared. Yeah, he does. Where was it? Um, a versus B1 versus B2 in the end, just so you can see. Um, I mean, the cost differential? Uh, yeah. Um, page 39. So essentially here you're picking a column and then hmm. and wait here we've got okay so there's a couple there's other things always sorry. higher than the rest of them yeah so here you then you again have to look at um there's a little slight misnomer um residential fee per dwelling unit there's per structure type or per dwelling unit per square foot is the second one. It's missing the per square foot. Um, I believe you have to choose between the two residential no, options. Or, huh? Foot, no. Right. One square, square foot five. match what we do and for everything else. <laughs> it will match what we're doing already for everything else. Right. So. I wouldn't agree with that square footage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And then um, the commercial industrial, um, where you've got currently a really <coughs> long table of uh, use types, this breaks it down to three. <laughs> so instead of having a page, <laughs> you have three rows. Um, huh? Simplify it. Yeah. Well, I think that was one of the bits of feedback that you all gave him going into this was yep. that that table was too specific. Um, it was actually discriminatory, some of it. But if something can't be categorized in one of the three, which I don't know what couldn't be, but in the small chance there is something, what would happen? Um, Kevin would have to look at making the, be the best match. As to which it would fall into. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I've done already on, like, on Continentals. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are these three categories where he came back with, or was this correct? That's from his his right. analysis. Okay. The, I think it's fine. Uh, the other thing that he's put in here, um, and I believe is is a, yes, is shown here. Um, he's actually recommending uh, a fifty percent discount on the commercial industrial uses because. The majority of your commercial industrial zones are along either 
um, 102 or 3A, which are state roads, which you cannot apply the impact fees to. So what he's saying is that the greatest impact from these uses you couldn't use. Um, so a p discounting that at a 50% rate so that it acknowledges that you're only using or can only use a portion of the fee or a portion of the true cost uh, to the roadway infrastructure um, on the non-state roads. So that it's not. How much commercial zones are in non-state roads? Most of them. On non-state? Non-state. Non -state. Non -state. Non -state. Yeah. The right. only one you got is uh, Albuquerque and Morgan. Oh, by the uh, golf course? Correct. And then, then you got St. Francis Way, and it's commercial, and, and Sterling, AK, at the far end, Mespital, Route 3A, Robertstown, uh, down the other end, a little bit of Page, Summit Cotler, very few. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's no massive area where you would need a lot of money coming to take care of something that's not state funded. Correct. Okay. If there was an improve, if there was an off-site improvement, or if there's a site plan that's going on a state road, Jen knows that the state's going to look a little bit that for the future with the curb cut, mm -hmm. yep. based off the use, and they, and they they already have their guidelines that they the engineers do mm -hmm. already. Uh, they wide the widening to turn the turn lanes, mm -hmm. all that comes into place with, with the site plan. Okay. That's man, man, mandatory. And we currently do not have a discount, correct? Correct. <laughs> yeah, and I don't. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, I don't know that a discount is the right or right just word. Like another thing, the twenty percent discount for it's not a discount; it's a reallocation. Mm -hmm. of the right. Market. It's saying we recognize that this development has an impact to the road network of 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 X, but. A large chunk of that is on the state roads, so we can't use it. So we can only use a portion of, we can only apply a portion of that um, in impact fees. Is 50% aggressive or the numbers there? And I'm not saying discount, but just the amount, because obviously, like one, a dollar 78, so it would have been. It would have been double. Re, yeah, so 356 or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. There's also yeah. incentive for somebody to build off of 3A. Yeah. Well, the the rate would apply across the board, regardless of where they are. Yeah. So. so where the impact is, that's not covered by state roads. It would just be given less of an impact dollar from the roads. Yeah. So does that hurt the town? That will, Is that enough money to cover what's needed to help with the road in the non-3A, non-102 non areas? I mean, if we're only taking half the amount in an area that just, it doesn't have a lot of commercial, is, is a town going to be spending more money to put that road in? Or is that covering us enough? No, because so what it would happen is, is, say you have an application come in on 3A. But it's not 3A or... or right. I'm going to do two. You have an application yeah. that comes in on 3A and is 1,000 square feet. He's going to be assessed at 1,000 square feet, say it's retail and restaurant, times the $1.78. You get take that same development where it's coming on one of the other streets that's that's not one of the state roads. He's going to be assessed the exact same amount. Um, and my point is by making it half because this is a discount of fifty percent. <coughs> if it's a not a state road, yeah, it's a town in a position that we're not collecting enough money for the non-state road areas. Gotcha. Where we better off just refunding the impacts where we can't use them on three A and one hundred two. But at least if we collect it in non-state no. areas, I don't want the town to be stuck paying for a road. It all goes into one pool together. Okay. So uh, the guy on 3A, not all of that traffic impact from his development is to 3A. Some of it's going to be to the side, side roads yep. as well. Um, yeah. uh, roughly half of it. Same with, same with your, you know, your guys on the side road. The majority of the traffic is going to travel along your state roads yep. and then turn onto your side road. Okay. Um, so it's... It's not site specific. Right. Specific. It's not our own industrial road or commercial strip that we have. Right. Okay. Like people say, Brown, Brown Ave, but we own that road, we maintain it. That's a separate issue. That's another issue. We we don't own our state roads. Mm -hmm. State plows, plows them, they maintain them, they pay, they pay them. Mm -hmm. We just give out tickets. 
All right, so we agree <laughs> lane mile method A by square foot with a discount for commercial. Okay. That's what we're going with. We don't get that money either. How efficient we are tonight? Yes. All right. Being a dork. <laughs> I got my highlighter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sitting here trying to circle everything. This is speed at its fastest. All right. They've been doing their homework for a while. You've been oh, you just keep working on it little by little, and at this point, it's like, oh, piece of cake. Well, you know what it's gone. All right, well, considering that's the end of the document, um, I think that was it. I would say we're done with that, right? I think so. I can confirm with Mr. Mayberry yeah, if you maybe want. Yeah, we just go but back with all those things we decided and say, um, is our homework done or does he have more for us? Yeah. For school and roads. All right. And now he has phase two questions for us. Is that we're jumping now? School and roads are done. Yep. Okay. Recreation, fire, library, town. Now some of these I don't know the answer to, but the, the first one's what studies or needs analysis are already available. I'm assuming Joan provided what we do we have. Double or? check. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 <clears throat> I know you mentioned last, um, we will say in the first bullet then, so studies or needs analysis uh, available that have already been conducted. I think Joan would have access to that. I don't know if, um, as select, select and rep, do you know of any specifically? No. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And I think we mentioned last time for recreational sites, the only one that's been new is a uh, sawmill, which we mentioned to him last, sawmill. Okay. Park, Litchfield. Little Park at Sawmill Brook, or whatever, whatever, whatever the official name is. Sawmill. <clears throat> I think that's the only new. I mean, there's been some improvements at Dara Pond in terms of irrigation and those fields, but facilities. Facilities. I don't know if that should be included. No, because that's not an impact. We got that. Yeah, because that's all fundraising and. It's all yeah. Fundraising. Yep. Really okay. Okay. And. Library has a space needs assessment underway now. Uh, can we ask Joan or someone to reach out to? Vicky? Yeah, um, yeah. These notes came from Jason on that last okay. bullet. So. And the rest of them is a the CIP work, correct? Mm -hmm. The rest of the stuff that he needs. Yeah. And that committee's just been put together. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm looking for a volunteer here. I'm getting to that later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fortunately, as a chairman, I can't do it. Because I can't. There's a law somewhere <laughs> in the I'll books. That, <laughs> <laughs> that says no moss. I'll be good to you, Mike. I'll find that. <laughs> I'll write it. All right. <laughs> Is that enough guidance for him on? I think so. That's basically just what he wanted? Okay. Yeah, he said he would... Um, like he did with schools and roads, he'll follow up with applicable staff persons like at the library, and he'll talk to Jason um, just to get anything specific. Should we put him, does he want to be on the agenda police. in September, or is that too soon for him to he might mentioned? be too soon. Okay. I can. Well, we're back to two meetings anyway in September, so even if the second right. is not, we have the okay. 16th. So. Okay. Well, I'll touch base with him. I'll ask when, when he would be ready. And... Do you want me to offer them either the would, second in September or yeah. the second in October? Because September second, we'll have that applicant here. I would assume. Right. So that may take some time. Right. So this, no, I meant the second meeting. Yeah. No, I was yeah. going to say the 16th is probably better. The sec second meeting of either month. Okay. Unless October makes it too late. All right. So if the, the applicants we do September second, maybe say September 16th or even the first meeting in October. Okay. Whatever is better for his schedule when he's done.
All right. <clears throat> so going down on the site, um, the Mr. Mayberry forwarded a memo that describes the basic changes made to the methodology report. Is that in reference to schools and roads, which mm -hmm. we then have since covered already? Oh yeah. Or is that that's yes. what we did already? Okay. Yeah, that's what you looked at last meeting. Okay. It's just leftovers on there. <clears throat> I think we hit everything with impact fees, unless I'm missing something. Yeah, just sending an update to the selectmen because in August you're you're supposed to review. Um, so since you're not ready to hold a hearing yet, do you still need to at least let the selectmen know where you're at um, in the process. So I can summarize the schools and roads part okay. um, of where we're at. And let them know that the others are underway, and I can get an update from Mr. Mayberry on you put projected time schedule. Timeline? If, if you hear back from him on what meeting he'll be attending, okay, and maybe include that in the memo, so okay. that we say know when we're going to be doing it. All right. And as point of procedure, do I just send that to the chairman, or do I send it to the whole selectman, or do I send it to Jason to give to the selectman? I'd send it to Jason. Yeah. I give it to Jason. To Jason yeah. Okay. And then he puts it on the. I think you, it agenda. gets addressed to the chairman. Um, but you just send it to Jason to put it into the packet. Okay. And is the goal to have that, because I'm on vacation soon, is the goal to have that by the end of the month or some point during August to them? Is that sufficient for a selectman? Yeah. When's your next meeting? Uh, where are we now? Next Monday. Oh. Right. What's the 11th? Yeah, I think it's We can either do it for that or we can wait for the next meeting after that, depending on what you're. That's fine. It's only as long as it's sometime this month, right? Right. If you have it for the 28th. Yeah. Because the 11th is only five, oh. four so business, three business days away. So. Right. So your next meeting is the, the 28th. Do you meet the 28th or the 25th? The 11th yeah, is, the yeah, 20. Yeah. Yeah, the 20, uh, 25th. Okay. Because I know 28. Oh, well, do you do cancel any meetings for the summer, or are you meeting? No. no? We, okay. we, yeah, 25th. So 11th, 25th, 25th. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll just. When are you on back from vacation? Um, I'm here until next Wednesday. I'm back on the 20th. Okay. So I'll have, have something to you for then. Yeah. Then. Okay. Let's forward over. That's fine. All right. And anything else on impact fees, Jen? Are we good? That's, that's it. All right. Next item on the agenda is the Moose Hollow update, which I saw some emails bouncing around um, <coughs> on target. On it's on target. The binder okay. went down today. The driveways all extended. Should be on target by the end of this month for completion. We've got a few calls from some of the abutters regarding sprinkler heads being in the wrong spot. I'll let it go at that. And we're not responsible for them. They've been corrected. Okay. <laughs> Hasn't had too, too, too many concerns yet. People, something new. They don't have to drive around something. Yep. But it's going in the way it is. The entrance is going to change at the end. I think it's the pine crest here at the grant. And that's more of a cumbersome thing with the plows. We're going to be destroying that in no time at all. That's going to go away. And that's going to be all fixed. Okay. Okay. All looks good. And all issues from citizens are being addressed? Yep. Okay. All right. Very good. Next item on the agenda is returning funds for the Leary subdivision. Anyone have any notes on that, or? That, though, though, I can speak for that. The funds on those was for the engineering during the time of the subdivision, okay? Anything that's remained in subdivision has been approved. Once it's approved, it falls into my hands on compliance, and that's what it is. Those funds were just for uh, the review at the time they went, went through. So those are the remainders and whatever that number is. It's supposed to be returned back to the applicant. John and I have already talked about this. I don't know what we could really do not knowing the amount of the funds. 
Um, it would be 500 and some odd dollars, if I recall. But if we return funds, do we have to allocate a specific number, or do we just uh, say return Mr. funds? Chairman, usually we don't. Okay. Just to return whatever funds, the main funds. In there because they calculate the interest down to the day. Yeah, I think correct. It's it's, we had a number. It's in there for 500 and some odd dollars. That's what's supposed, supposed to be returned. How about Continental Building and Tim's Turf? Tim's Turf is uh, a inspection fee escrow that's been out there for the site plan for our engineer to go out and look at. I've been doing all the inspections out there because mm -hmm. it's part of the, the ongoing site. Mm -hmm. So as a building official, my job is to ensure that it gets it in compliance. I go out there, there's no reason to pay me because I'm being paid to go do it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So to have that engineering escrow out there for somebody else to go look at is not necessary. The same thing I did on the church addition and the remodel of the parking lot. Same thing I've done on Rick's job that we're doing up there. I'm doing the site inspections on that too. You mean the Continental Building? That's part of the building permit process. Tim will be coming, believe, for the board in the future for an addition. He wants to put on out there, as you notice, he's got a lot of stuff. And he wants to get us some lean to out coming off the building, so he's got to come back to you guys. So at that time, we're going to be looking at the site again. Okay. What was originally proof of the pit? The pit is what the issue is. It was a road with erosion control. That's all in place, hasn't moved. Because the sand's not selling as good as it was in the heyday. He's got loam back there behind the building, but all, all his controls are in place. Not affect, affecting the brook. So normally I do that. It's probably, what's happening, gentlemen, what I found here when I got here, I was told to just look at the buildings and walk away from the rest. And that's what the old inspector had told me. And I said, it doesn't seem right, but that's what I did. Doing so, I found that that's not, not the thing to do. I elderly projects, all of them site plans, basically it's what they are, they're private roads and buildings. I'm supposed to ensure that they're done, okay? They don't get the last certificate of occupancy until work is done or there's money covered. Okay. So that's how it works. So the same with Continentals, he had a site plan approved mm -hmm. for multi-mini storage out there. It's been around. Rick, Rick says he doesn't care, but I say we turn the money. You know, if we're not doing do anything. So that the money we're returning is not for the building he's building. No, that's just the escrow to cover the review of the plans. That's okay. what it was. And the inspection. And I'm assuming if all three are on here, Jen concurs that this should be returned. She, I don't. That what she was here to say. There's no notes. <clears throat> she put it, put it on because she thinks she told me she thinks it should be returned. Okay, and the numbers she just put it on that it makes sense to return it to get out of holding money that we're not going to do anything with. We've got the site plans. I do the inspections on the site plans. Yeah. I guess historically, I mean, I haven't returned money yet, so. I'm to say I don't want to, but I haven't done it before. Do we have usually a sign off from someone as a town employee saying it's okay to return these funds? Is there a formal mechanism? Or? Not that I know of what you guys use. You just get it blessed to return it, and that's it. It's done. Because these are not, these are cash escrow type things and not bonds and stuff like that. Yep. They cover the um, review or to keep on the, 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 the thing that you had to keep a $5,000 kitty. If mm -hmm. the plan was, wasn't to be approved, but I'm doing the inspection, what's the kitty for? To hire an outside engineer to do it, which was what they were doing before, because no one was looking at it. Were all three of these approved then to the point where money can be returned? Yep. They're all three approved? They're all three approved. That's the board thing, too. Journey. Yeah. I think that would be... Does it have to be three separate motions, or...? You could do one motion with all three, procedurally. You can move it in one, but you need to specify all three okay. in the motion. Let's take a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, return funds to the following. Leary Subdivision, Map 9, Lot 1, on 172 Charles Bancroft Highway. Continental Building, Map 21, Lot 18 and Tim's turf map 20 lot 30. I have a second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carries 500. Zero, zero. 
All right, uh, July 15th minutes. Has anyone had a chance to review? <laughs> they were that day. I thought you were there. You're confused? That's fine. Did it's you see Anthony before? Kevin mm -hmm. Did you see Anthony earlier? No. It ain't going to nail it. It's not you usable. Did anyone have any She's adjustments a hammer. to the minutes? No, you weren't here. Oh, Are you here? Yeah. You weren't here? Were you here? Yes, yes, yes. So the three of us. I was fine with it. Yeah. Okay. Take a motion on the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes of July 15th. You have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Abstain. Carries 302. Yeah. Yeah. Any other business? Uh, yours? Top? Well, I'll hit this first. I was asked by the chairman of the selectmen um, to uh, find a volunteer from the planning board, a full-time member to be on the capital improvement committee uh, cap to do the CIP work. The meetings will be held once a month. Late August is the next meeting. Uh, they don't have a date picked yet, um, but that does have to be a formal recommendation of the planning board in terms of who will be representing the planning board at these meetings for the CIP. I should be available for it. Okay. I take a motion. I make a motion that we have uh, our vice chair Mr. Tom Young, become uh, a uh, representative to the uh, capital improvement. A second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? Carries 500. Zero, zero. Procedurally, do I just reply back and tell him, or is there something more formal that has to be done? Uh, so just reply back. I would say reply back. However, he contacted you. Yep. yep. And he has the same in return. Well. I'll just tell you what day it's going to be. Okay. Thank you for volunteering. Any other business from um, over there? Anyone? Nope. No further business. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Right. Aye. aye. Oppose. Abstain. Carries 500. Zero, zero. Our next meeting will be on September 2nd at 7 p.m. Have a good evening. No, it's not a record. It's not a record. We're done fast. Ah, damn. We're done. 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 We're done